Barbie from Obi's World. We're back at it again with another episode. You know, we having fun today because today is something, you know, a topic that we can't let slide. You know, it's not just about these niggas. It's about these friendships, too. Mm. But we're going to get into it. I ain't going to get too ahead of myself. But anyways, I just want to go ahead and introduce my special guest for today. It's one of my closest friends, you know. Y'all probably seen a couple of our videos together. You know, I'm not retarded unless she's around because we feed off each other's energy. But go ahead and introduce yourself. This is my friend Doll Faces. So give her a round of applause. Hey y'all, this is girl Doll Face. So we just want to know a little bit about you before we go ahead and continue on in this episode because we know we, we got to stay updated, you know. So go ahead and tell us about um, so, um, so for, of course, at first, you know, y'all saw me modeling with, with uh, Barbie. But as of right now, I'm just working on, you know, building up my clientele. I'm a, hair, I'm a hairstylist. I'm a makeup artist. I'm about to introduce myself into doing henna um, lamination and brow thing. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, as of right now, I'm just working on hair. So where can they find you at on Instagram? Um, my Instagram is underscore doll faces, but it's a O. I mean, it's a zero um as a O and two S's and another underscore. Forgot about that one. So we'll go ahead and drop that. I'm about, say, I'm about to say I don't even think I can. Yeah, nothing on it. we'll go ahead and drop that in the description. Also, we'll post it up there when I put up the podcast as well. Put her, you know, little Instagram up there. She does have a TikTok too, but you can find that from her Instagram. So go ahead and follow all her social medias. Get acquainted because, you know, if you need it, she got it. DMV, hairstylist, makeup artist, all that. Get into it. So, hey, friend, how are you? What, friend? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we had some crazy experiences with friendships, you know. I, I, I've i done podcasts so far about talking about guys. And I feel like, you know, as a female, since this is all, this podcast is mainly about being a woman's world. We need to get into the woman's world of dealing with these friends. Like these friends. <laughs> Sisters, friends. And she was like one of my only like what second friends. <laughs> I swear, because it's like it's so hard to actually make and maintain friends nowadays because females is just as shady as these niggas are when you're in a relationship. I probably word is maintaining. Maintaining is the biggest problem because we can't never tell when you when you when you girls are being for real or not. You feel me? Like I can't ever tell what's the real and what's the fake. You know, it's so much love floating around. We trying to decipher. <laughs> We're trying to decipher. So first thing I want to get into, you know, we gonna I like to get real personal in these in these situations. So real personal, up close and personal. Like we can get face like we here. So, I definitely want to know, as far as your friendships, right, what is mm -hmm. the craziest thing that's ever happened to you in a friendship? I feel like the craziest thing that ever happened to me in a, in a friendship is somebody getting offense, offended about me making a general post, and she felt as though I was talking about her. I felt as though I didn't talk about my friend. I tell y'all what it is straight up. There's no sugar coat, there's no nothing. And, and, and who talks about their friends on social media? So if you felt though as though I was talking about you, we're two different kinds of people here. Facts. I, I that's one thing I do hate about social media. Like so many people, like just because the shoe fit on your end doesn't mean that I'm specifically talking about you. Because I could be talking about my neighbor. I could be talking about the person I, I just met on the street. Because the, the general post was about baby mama. And <laughs> you know that I know. We know what I was talking about. But at the end of the day, my friends, I don't call my friends baby mothers. Y'all are mothers. Shit, I don't even call the daddies daddies. 
They're but y'all are just the mothers. So if you feel as though I'm talking about baby mother, you should know that I have the utmost respect out of you that I don't even label you as a baby mother. I label you as a mom. Right. And my number one thing with that is it's like so many people get lost in social media and what we post and they just take it and run with it. Like, why not just hit me up and ask me about it? Like, I would have told you straight up, like, come on now. You know that I never call you a baby mother. Like, that's just like, what? That's stupid. So I definitely understand that. That is definitely 100, 100% understandable. I feel like as far as me, like the craziest thing that's ever happened to me, bro, I've had the in the most encounters with the craziest females. Like, they used to do me dirty. Like, I I've dealt with so many females who just done me dirty for no reason whatsoever. So, I take my friend with me on this trip to Miami because it was my birthday, right? And she asked me, she's like, yeah, can I bring my homegirl with me? I'm like, all right, cool. Like, I had, at the time, I had my ex with me. Like, my at the time, he was my nigga, but... I had my ex with me and you know we all basically like went in on the hotel and everything like that but as far as like renting a car i rented the car i did i basically paid for it because of course i asked you to come the only thing i asked that help with was like the hotel type thing so we get down there and of course miami's hot she get the you know, her and her friend get the fussing because how hot it was and because we were walking because we wanted to hop on the jet skis and we had a friend out there who, like, hooked us up with riding on jet skis for the free. So I was just like, all right, so come on, let's go. He want us to meet us at this meet him at this location. And so we walked down there to go do it. And she's up there complaining the whole time, whatever, whatever. Then we finally get back to the hotel. We get back to the hotel. There was, like, a like a dispute between her friend and my nigga like it was so much going on at that time then i turn around and we left to go somewhere and when we came back um they had like a little audition or whatever out there because they were dancers so we took them to the audition and when we came back they had grabbed they had got an uber to grab all of their stuff and they left out the hotel right mind you my birthday was literally the very next day my birthday was literally the very next day, and I was hopping on a flight to go to Cali from Miami. So I come back to the hotel room, and I'm like, bro, I'm packing up, getting ready for us to leave. I'm like, bro, where's all my makeup at? I'm like, and when I tell you I had, like, MAC makeup, and everybody who knows makeup know that MAC is not cheap, bro. It's not cheap. At all. <laughs> right. So I come back. Shorty took all my makeup. When I tell you all of my makeup oh, and, yeah, packed, I remember you you. and packed up and left, went to another hotel and everything. By the time I figured out that my makeup was gone, I went to go call her. She like, yeah, we on our flight type shit. What you mean you on your flight? You took my makeup. Shorty, it's my birthday tomorrow. Like, what do you mean? She's like, yeah, just send me your address and I can just, I can ship it back to you. What is that going to do for me right now? What is that going to do for me right now? Like, I am on my way to Cali to go celebrate my birthday. Like, what are you talking about right now? So she was just like, she was like, oh, well, um, I was just like, no, what y'all about to do is y'all about to send me my money for y'all taking the makeup so I can go get makeup and do my face for my birthday. Like, what are you talking about? She's just like, she's like. Uh, her friend in the background getting all hype talking about something. I'm not about to do that. What do you mean you're not about to do that? You the one who packed up my stuff and gave it to your home. She was just like, she was just like, I thought it was her makeup. How are you gonna say you thought it was her makeup when you saw me sitting right there doing you my know, makeup right now? You know your friend can't afford no mac, no fucking, but you can't even afford more food. Bro, I was so heated. And they had $25. So they put the deposit down on the hotel. I was just like, you know what? It's cool. Don't even worry about it. Because that deposit on that hotel, don't think that you're getting that back. Because I'm going to use that to go get my makeup to go ahead and do my face for my birthday. It wasn't a big deal. It was just a principle. Like, you took my stuff. Instead of you saying, oh, my bad, I didn't mean to. You want to sit up there and get defensive. And as a friend, if I ever did that to you, I would have been like, bro, my bad. I can't get it to you right now. But let me go ahead and send you some bread so you can get something done. Like, even if, because, you know, like, if you go to Sephora or you go to Mac, they go ahead and do your face for you. If you pay them, like, all right, let me just get you some money so 
so that you can get your face done and I'll go ahead and ship you your stuff so you'll have it when you get back type thing. Like, something. You wasn't even courteous of that. Like, come on now. Like, be for real. If we really friends, that's the type of tip that you're on. Not, and you're not gonna sit up there and let your friend that you bought on a trip for my birthday sit up there and cuss me out because of the simple fact that I'm asking y'all for the money back for my makeup. How long y'all been friends? Bro, we was friends for like... I want to say, um, like, almost a year. And we was, like, going on trips together before. Like, we went to Atlanta together. We was taking pictures, she having fun. and every- goofy shit. She never did no goofy stuff like that, bro. And I was like... It'd be the other friend. Right? I'm like, bro, you really letting your friend sit up here and disrespect me on my birthday trip that I invited you to and you asked me if you can bring her? Like, come on now. Come on now. Like, you ruined a good friendship because of the simple fact that you wanted... Because you allowed your friend to disrespect me. Like, come on now. Now I look at you differently. So I haven't talked to that girl since then. That was crazy to me. But um, as far as friendships, what is the biggest problem that you had in your friendship so far? Like, what have you noticed? Like, it's the common root problem of the reason why you fall out with friends. Um, because bitches don't ever know how to communicate. Bitches don't ever know how to just speak up. They always let shit build up. The, the thing is, as women, we let things slide so many times to where we get to a point where something else will happen to where we feel like everything that has gone wrong has to be addressed right then and there. No, we grown and shit. Talk about it when you're feeling that way. Like, you don't want to talk about it right then and there. Talk about it another time. Like, if I'm upset with my homegirl, I'll holler at you tomorrow, but I'm a damn sure to talk to you about how I'm feeling. And that's what girls don't understand. Yeah, I definitely understand that. I feel as though, like, communication definitely is, like, the biggest problem when it comes down to friendship. But I feel like a lot of friendships nowadays is missing that loyalty, bro. Loyalty is so important to me, like... You cannot communicate with me all you want to. I feel like communication is like big in relationships. I feel like in your friendships, the most important thing is your loyalty. Like if I know that we have a falling out just because of the simple fact that you don't want that you haven't communicated your problems with me or whatever. I know that everything that has been spoken between me and you, uh, my trust with you is still there even after the fact. You feel me? Like it's not like... I have to worry about what you're going to tell the next person or what you're going to tell the person that I told you about or something like that. It's not like I purposely sit up there and gossip with my friends. But if I tell you something out of the confidence of me just thinking about it and I'm like, yeah, so let me tell you what just happened, blah, 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 that when we fall out, you all like, oh, Shorty did this, Shorty did that, she said this, she said that about you, 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 and you, like, and then... My number one thing I hate the most is when they like to take it to social media. Like, oh, do not let a female that you told everything to get a chance to say everything on social media because that is the first place they're going to take it to. They start getting Twitter fingers. They start subbing you on Instagram. Yeah, I'm not going to say nothing, but it ain't my fault that you can't pay to get this done or you on uh, Section 8 and got to pay this much. You talking about this. You talking about that. First of all, what's wrong with Section 8? <laughs> <laughs> um, as much as we pay in taxes, um, bitch, food stamp, um, cash assistance, you damn skip y'all getting all, all of, of that. Back. All of that. If not I need it, the government. Me, but still, I don't feel as though there's nothing wrong with getting your lift back with the government. Yeah, I don't think there's nothing wrong with getting assistance too, especially in the simple case of if you have kids and stuff like that. Like you want you and your, you. So what you want me to do? Sit on the street with my kids instead of going here and get sex mate because of my pride? Yeah, all right. But I don't feel like. I, I definitely feel like loyalty is my biggest problem when it comes down to friends. And it'd be so crazy because my mom will point it out from a mile away. She's not your friend. She's not your friend. That's not your friend. I can tell you who I think your friend is. And it is, I, it's like so crazy because at the end of the day, she ended up be right. Like I've had females sit up there and tell another female that like, you know, what the whole modeling agency thing. I was being generous to a lot of people. I was putting money behind a lot of people. 
and they would never do the same they would never put like a 100 percent effort or ever do the same thing for me and i literally had a female tell me oh yeah she said that she was just gonna go ahead and use you up for whatever she could use you up for and then when everything was said and done just go ahead and dip like what <laughs> like i thought we was cool all right, that's cool. Like, I ain't got no problem. But at the end of the day, like I said, I feel like loyalty is definitely, like, the number one thing for me. Like, I, I understand the whole communication thing. But I feel like if you can't be loyal, if I can't trust you behind my back, even when we on bad terms, then we got a problem. But what is the worst falling out you've had in a friendship? You say, who did what? What's the you worst falling out? out that you had in a friendship? Damn. <laughs> <What>? Not the... <laughs> Actually, I'm going to say the only friendship that really did hurt me would, would be, I would say, my girlfriend's mother. Because, you know, you know me. You know how I am with kids. And you know how I am with August. You know how I am about Zane. Like, I don't play about the kids. Like... You know how I am about my boyfriend's kids. When it comes to my friend's kids, they are my children as well because y'all are not alone in this. So when it came down to all because of social media or somebody saying something, and we did, you know, we would have our little falling outs and here and there, we'll come back together. But after this time, like, I'm tired of it because I shouldn't have to keep repeating myself about how I feel because whenever we would stop being friends, she'll take her son into account for that. I am not your baby father. You are not gonna sit here and tell me that this kid is this, that, and the third to me, and then just because you and me having a little falling out, that's all completely taken away from me. Like that just I feel like kids just shouldn't be a part of that. Like, girl, do you not know I know where you live at? I will pull up. And I will No, no, I I understand that, you know, the mother does play a big part, and if you're not cool with the mother, then you know there really is no relationship with the child but you can't you can't no there's some stretches to that there's some stretches to that because i've had a situation where the person that was and you know the person that was my son's godmother Mm -hmm. ended up when i start when i broke up with my ex or whatever they ended up starting to talk after hearing rumors right right Right. And it's so funny because his facial expression just showed it all. Like, all right, so listen, this is the situation. We were cool. Like she she came through through my modeling agency. And a lot of my friendships build with the people that are in the things or incorporated in the things that I have going on. So either ambassador for my clothing brand, modeling agency, whatever. So she was in my modeling agency. We became cool, built a bond, whatever. And when I was pregnant with August, she was really like, she was there. You know, she had a thing for kids too. Like, she just, you know, she was big on making sure kids was okay and all that other stuff. So I made her August's, well, she made herself August's godmother. She was like, I'm his godmother. I'm his godmother. Okay, whatever. So I let her be his godmother. And she would like have him for a weekend, whatever. Like, always was over there. And then, you know, somebody get the buzz and come along like, yeah, you know that she messed with your baby father. Like, she messed with your son's father by the time we was together. And I'm like, hmm? So, I was just like, I brought it to their attention. No, why would I ever do that? Blah, blah, blah. This girl used to sit up there and talk bad about him to me. All that other stuff. Like, knew exactly what he did to me in the relationship. And this is the boy I was on divorce court with. So, you know exactly, he, he publicly, everybody knows exactly what he did in that relationship, bro. So, you, out of all people, should know not to, like, what? So, what ended up happening was, I we broke up. And when we broke up, somebody came to me and they was just like, they was just like, I'm glad that you broke up with him and whatever and cut ties with her because I found out that, you know, she was messing with your baby father i'm like how you know that oh i found out from my friend who's close with her hmm okay so i brought it to their attention when i brought it to their attention both of them dramatic got hyped no that's not true you know listen let me tell you something guilty minds 
guilty hearts, guilty bodies speak in the moment that they are called. They, you getting hype. If I know it's not true, I'm going to tell you. I'm a, bro, it's not true. But if you want to believe it, go ahead and believe it. I, what I'm going to get hyped for if I know I ain't do it. God know I ain't do it. Like, come on now. He is my witness. I did When I do that, you telling me something? Tell me something I don't know, you know? So when I brought it to their attention, they both got hyped. Called me back to back. I didn't answer the phone. Called me back to back, back to back, back to back. I'm like, bro, dang, y'all guilty hearts is weighing heavy, huh? Like, shit. So I get this long, drawn-out text message from her. Bro, I'm reading this message. This is too much. I'm sorry. When you send me books, unless it's my nigga, I am not reading it. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's too much. Y'all doing too much. So, come come and find out probably like two weeks later, they together in a relationship. I'm like, and yet you want to know why I said what I said. Like, after you just sat up here and told me that you thought this nigga was gay, y'all, your whole family thought he was gay, you said he wasn't, and shit, no, nothing like that. You turn around and do something like that. Trying Make to, it. Trying to hit you with the misdirection. Right? That's what I'm saying. Like, this is so, it, is, it just blows my mind. And I'm like, I'm not dwelling on it, and it doesn't bother me because I really don't care. But it took me some time to, like, like, cause I know if I would have sent my son over there, he would have been around her. So it been, it took me some time because if you could play two face like that, I don't know what I can trust out of you. I don't know what I can trust out of you at all. Like if you can play the 50 like that, I cannot trust you. So what makes you think I'm going to trust you around my kid? So it took me some time to get over that. So I eventually was just like, go ahead. I'll let him go over there, whatever, whatever. But it's just a simple fact, you know, that's the craziest falling out that I've ever had because like, what? <laughs> what? You just try, you just, what? <laughs> so, all right, let me ask a question to both of y'all. All right. Like the reverse. Have you ever been around one of your friends and was looking at their boyfriend like, damn, he cute. Just even the thought. I ain't saying you acted on it, but just the thought. Mm-hmm. No. Mm-mm. No, absolutely not. You can call me but how may I help you? Um, do I have call? But no, I've never had a moment like that. Like, I've had a moment. I had a moment where I told my friend about oh, this crush that I had when I was in high school or whatever, and she ended up trying to date him, tried to play a whole fake pregnancy and everything, and I was best friends with this girl for like a year or two, and it's crazy because she sat up there, I sent her a message one day, because you know, I'm big on making sure I start the new year off right, I had messaged her one day and was just like, you know, I apologize the way I handled the situation, I don't apologize for what I said, but I apologize for the way I handled it, I was like, because that just blew me, like that was crazy, she tells me, well I don't accept your apology, what? These females be thinking that they got more, they they hold more weight than what you really do. Like, baby, I don't, I wasn't looking for you to accept the apology. I was just apologizing for my sake, not yours. Like, but we ain't gonna get into that. But Kendall, you have you ever been in a situation where like you was around your friend and her nigga, and you was just like, mm, your nigga cute, sis. Like, kind of like saying that in your head. Kind of <laughs> what? Like, have you ever thought that your friend's nigga was cute? Cute as in, like, oh, I would get to him? No. But, like... Like, attractive. Like, if you think that... The dude's not bad looking. Like, y'all both are an attractive couple. Y'all both favor each other. Just the way, like... I wouldn't take an offense, like... Like, one time... Fucking... Who said it? Somebody was like, oh, like, you know, you, you nigga look good. And I'm just like, I know, right? Cause I don't take a, I don't take offense to stuff like that because I don't think that way. Like I know my nigga look good and shit. Like yeah, I'm not. So I don't know. Like I don't uh, think that way. When when my friends get in a relationship with people 
regardless of whether or not I feel as though outside of y'all relationship that your nigga would look good, he looks ugly to me now. <laughs> just because of the yeah. simple fact that yeah. he's... Yeah. Just yeah. because he's... He to do now. And like, even if we argue, this ain't the ugly ass nigga. Right. <laughs> like, just like how your but, friends will be mad but, at you and you like, you want ugly ass bitch. I'm talking to my homegirl, like, if I'm talking to my homegirl, I'm like, you know, you're an attractive woman, you know, he's an attractive man, but like, outside of this, like, you're not even looking at him. But if we talking about it, then... Right, like, I, yeah, not put, not saying, like, your nigga ugly just because y'all together. It's just more so, like, girl, I do not pay attention to how your nigga look because y'all in a relationship together. So instantly in my head, then your nigga's ugly. As soon as, as, soon as I see my friends with somebody, your nigga's ugly. That's just it. Like, I don't know what to tell you. But um, what's the biggest stereotype that you know men have about women? I feel like that's it's no. Let's put it like this: What's the biggest stereotype that you feel like men have about women when it comes down to like a female friendship? I feel like the whole when you get around your girlfriends, y'all be you know, y'all basically be fucking. It's like the biggest stereotype when it comes down to niggas thinking about females in a friendship. Bye. Bad, 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 right. Bad, bad. <laughs> yes, I definitely feel Why that is way. it such a, a stereotype when it comes down to body? I don't know. And I feel like, you want to know what the biggest thing is? I feel like that they, like, when you get around, like, say, for instance, oh, this is, no, I lied. I'm changing my answer. This is the biggest stereotype. When you get around your friends, especially if you get around a friend that's single, they be like, you in a relationship, they be like, you and your whole ass friend. <laughs> they be like, I know when you be with her that y'all be doing thought activities. Like, I feel like that is the biggest stereotype when it comes down to you hanging with your friend when it comes down to men. I feel like it's just it's three different versions of a female. It's the version when she with her friends, it's a version when she with her man, and the version when she with her family. That's just it. I don't think it's a stereotype. I just think it's facts. Mm, I don't know. Men really stereotype because it was so crazy. I was looking at videos and stuff the other day, and it was like these two girls. They was like making out or whatever, and they was like best friends or whatever. But they was like they wasn't in a relationship. They were just best friends. My nigga was looking at the video with me, and he was just like, do y'all really be doing stuff like that? Yeah. <laughs> like, I was just like, I feel like that's the biggest stereotype when it comes down to being in a relationship. I mean, being the, in a friendship. Y'all get the drinking and kissing on each other. Girl, ooh, look at your, your, your ass looks so fat in these jeans. Let me <laughs> grab that ass. All that little freaky stuff y'all be doing. I feel like, I feel like the that's biggest. That's the version when y'all were around with y'all friends. I don't know. I feel like... It ain't no I don't know. It's facts. <laughs> I ain't lying. Kendall, do you think it's three versions of females? Have you ever kissed one of your friends on the lips? Wait, what do you mean three versions of females? Tell All right, so he was saying that there is a version of a female when they with their friends. There's a version of a female with their men. And there's a version of a female mm -hmm. with their family. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. I don't think yes, so. Absolutely. That's the there version. are different versions because in a certain way, like the same way you act at home by yourself with your dude, is not the same way that you would act with your mom or with your father sitting right there. There are certain I feel like there there are boundaries. Boundaries is a very big thing. I don't know because like the same way that you the same way the same way that that I mean, I can't really say like with you, like with you and me, but like However, I might, you know, act a certain way when my dude is around. It would be different when he, but it's just you and me. Yeah. Which I'll do. Like, I'm, like there's different, like there's different versions. So, this is the part that blows me though. Y'all feel as though it's like I don't know. That's living a triple Have life. Have you ever kissed one of your friends on her lips? Yes. Please. <laughs> he said I love my friend. She said, I love, love my friend. I love you. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I love you. You keep it alive. But, but Lil Wayne and Birdman can't kiss, though. Wait, what you really said? <laughs> he said, but Lil Wayne and Birdman can't kiss, though. They are, as a man, no. <laughs> I don't know. And that, you wonder what's crazy? 
You want to know what's crazy? She on the phone. What's really crazy is is that what blows me the most is, you know, it's 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 bound. Everybody says boundaries to certain things, and this is something that I want to know because, you know, I have a son. Do you think it's weird for? Yeah, you can turn it back up. Do you think it's weird for like a father to kiss his son on the lips? No, no, that's his baby. Cause I've done it. So I'm saying like. In a way, it's like, isn't that, I don't know, like that, that's, I feel like that still plays a part because of the simple fact that. Not when they grown. I mean, I don't have no grown, grown son, but you know, when you got your baby and it's so adorable. I've seen gonna, fathers, you know, I've seen fathers who like would kiss their like 15, 16 year yeah. old son on the lips type thing, like. I don't know. It depends on their relationship. I mean, I I didn't grow up with my father, so that would be kind of weird. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it depends on their relationship. But strangers, like people that's not MN, but don't get away from the point. The point is you girls do certain stuff when y'all around each other that you don't do in other cases. Um, I don't know. Y'all be kissing each other. Now, we're not just talking about you and your <laughs> yeah, set of friends. But it's some girls that be going all the way with each other. Like, oh, well, she ate my pussy. I ain't eat hers. Yeah. See? I, I, I've heard situations. <laughs> I've heard situations. Such Y'all be out alive, man. I mean, do we? It's the alcohol and the, and the excitement of freedom and y'all around each other and y'all just be wilding out. So, so I got a question. I got a question, and this is going to be real funny. So, when you're in a relationship and you do that, when you're in a relationship, but it's a female, is that cheating? It's not cheating. It's just inappropriate, right? Kendall, is that cheating? Wait, and what cheating? So, say for instance, you in a relationship, like when you with your man right now, and then you go out with your friend, and then things go too far with you and your friend while you still in a relationship with your nigga. Is that cheating? Yes. I feel as though anything that you wouldn't want your partner to know, I'm not going to say, I'm, okay, I'm not going to go that far as far as anything that you don't want them to know, because there's a lot of things that sometimes just ain't your partner's business, but, um, yeah, that's still considered cheating. Having a sexual encounter with somebody, or and especially if, if you don't tell him about it, yes, it's cheating. But if you tell him, you give him the option to feel how he feels. If you don't care, if you like it, if you want to know how it went. Yeah, I mean, like, okay. I feel as though it, it, it depends on the couple. I feel you know like it. if your man know that you swing that way, then he need to set that boundary in the beginning. That's basically like what me and Justin was talking about last show. You got to set boundaries when you get into a relationship. And if you don't set those boundaries, how am I supposed to know? When I'm supposed to mind read? Like, I can't. Like, in anybody's mind, in any female's mind, would you really think that it's a problem? Do we think that it would be a problem for us to mess with a female when we're in a relationship? But in then- our head... We like, you know, niggas but like that stuff. Gir- but some girls don't even tell a man that they no, like females. Um, I, um, no, so how I can you know. set a boundary when a person well, don't you even... have to, you have to, like, I don't know. That's like something weird to leave out of like, a relationship. Like, that's that weird. all the time. And, and it might just be something, a conversation to come up. And she might say something like, yeah, you know, me and my girl used to mess with each other and just keep it going. Like, oh, what you, you just say you and your girl used to mess with each other. Like, like, all right, Kendall, did you tell? Well, I feel like your nigga do, though. Did you tell your nigga that she used to mess with females or like, did he like find out? Yeah. Oh, so now, baby, he go. So now it's competition from the men and females. He like, Does he feel weird and about it? He don't, and, that's why, and that's why he don't like me being with her. <laughs> It's too much pressure. <laughs> he said it's competition. It's too much pressure. It's too much competition. It's not, no, it's not no competition. It's not no competition. It'll never be no competition. Well, I mean, yeah. in a man's mind. But, yeah, but in a man's, that's what I was saying. Like, in a man's mind, I feel like they'd be like, that's too much competition, bro. Now I got to do, I can't just say that. You I got to keep you away right. from niggas. I got to keep you away from yeah. niggas. You ever watch Lines? 
lions on like Animal Planet, mm. how the male oh, lion, yeah. he will go around his territory and he mark it like every day. So you gotta understand, man is like you got he like on he on he marking his territory every day. He knows some nigga that like my girl. Some and now girl he got like right. Girl. So now he got male and female to worry about. <laughs> to be like, all right, bro, like Instagram. This is too much. Oh my god, yeah. that's a lot of shit to cover. That's a lot of territory. Your territory yeah. went from your neighborhood to now Instagram, where it's millions of people. You right, know? that's a lot of pressure. I mean, but vice versa too. I was about to say, well, I would hope Cause, that. Because females be like. I would hope that my nigga don't like. No, I'm talking about vice like, versa far as females like, damn, I got to watch this nigga in real life and on Instagram and shit, you feel me? Nah, I just feel like when it comes to Instagram, y'all be doing just a little bit too much. Even if, no, even if you're not doing nothing, you still get that, that, uh, that, that pressure, like. Nah, I normally all right. So it's like a feeling. Like Kendall, you gotta back me up on this. Ooh, is it intuition. a is it a feeling that you get when you know that your nigga is not like if, even if it's not your nigga now, like if like it was any of your exes or anything. Like, did you ever get that feeling? Like, I feel like this nigga's really doing something, and then you found out he actually was. Oh, it ended. Oh, okay. All right, we we'll have to we'll bring her back more. But that's the same thing though, like, you, it ain't no, I don't know, man, it ain't no really, like. Make sure you send me that link so I can send it yeah, to I feel like, I don't know, in that situation, I definitely feel like that's kind of, that's kind of like the thing that happens. And it's up to you whether or not you want to deal with it again. Uh, it's up to you whether or not you want to deal with it again. But at the same sense, you just got to... Mm, I, I don't know. It's like, it's like I don't want to be that one to be like, oh, give me your phone, let me check your phone type mm-hmm. thing because I'm the number one person to be in my feelings if I see something I don't like. But I definitely think that as far as... I don't know. I definitely think as far as relationship-wise that that's like a tuition thing like i i how about I, it's like you a, felt that way and then found out he wasn't doing nothing have you had that that, that ever happened to you no <laughs> <laughs> i've always been i've always been right once i got that feeling i knew i knew i was just like there ain't no way especially because i'm explain I'm, the feeling is a tingly feeling it's it's like all right so this is this is how it goes for me Perfect. Okay, I'm <laughs> so this is how it goes for me personally. I've had this situation where I was sitting there. I I, I watch demeanor. I watch the way you speak to me. I watch the way you move about things. I watch the way you hold your phone, the way you don't hold your phone, the way you go about picking up your phone, the way you face your phone. I do stuff like that. Your time, where it's spent that. Like, I know your daily routine. Like, I am, like, I've always, not always, not when I was, like, in high school and stuff, but I've always lived with the person that I dated. So it was easy for me to pick up. up on what you do and what you don't do. So I knew what, what to look out for. I'm dead. So I'm like, when it comes down to me in a relationship, I knew for a fact what to look for. So every Hello. time he faced his phone down, instead of having his phone up, normally he have it up. And he faced his phone down when we go to sleep. Now what you face your phone down for? If you got your ringer on and then you all of a sudden have your ringer off, why you turn your ringer off? Or if he go to work and he normally go to work, go to this place and come right back. Like, all right, so why you go there if you normally go there and come right back? Like, I I pay attention to certain things like that. And then the way you speak to me, the way you're around me, because like I said, guilty minds speak. You know, guilty, weighed minds and hearts speak. So if they feel guilty, if they really, because I feel like when you're in a relationship that the person doesn't want to tell you that they cheated or did anything outside of the relationship because of the simple fact that they actually really do care about you. 
100%. I feel like that they care about you, but and they know what they would be losing if they lost you. And they don't want to jeopardize that. I definitely feel like... I, I, I'm not going to say that they are completely madly in love with you. But I know that they have some type of feeling towards me personally. I feel like... I feel like if, it's, if that feeling they have for you is so, real strong, like... They're like, you know, I, have I cheated before? Not have I cheated before. We ain't. <clears throat> I think I've... Yeah, I've cheated. I've cheated before, but it was more like... Like the at the end of the relationship type shit where I felt like all right this shit dead for like real. this is over. <clears throat> but, this is um, over before it's over. But if you if you really got that chick that's doing this doing that, blah, blah, so you gotta you gotta weigh your options. And if you cheat on somebody that's so great, like obviously she's not. You don't hold it as high as you think you hold it. And shit. Yeah, I'm not saying all right. So let's put it like this. I'm not saying that the person, like, say, for instance, like, with my ex or whatever, I'm not going to say, like, because he cheated on me that, you know, like, I mean, before he cheated on me that he, like, loved me to death, would do anything for me. Like, I, he proved that on multiple occasions that he wouldn't do everything for me. Like, he proved on multiple occasions that, like, you know, I wasn't, like, the priority in his life, but I knew that he cared. Like, something about me something about it could have been like even it couldn't have just been me it could have been what i was doing for him like it, it could have been something like that because when people do stuff for you of course you automatically build that connection and you of course you don't want to cut ties with that person because of the simple fact that you're doing they're doing for you or you're doing for them so it could have been because i was doing for him and that he knew that if he let that go that nobody else would do that like for him so in a way it kind of made him care about me if that makes sense yeah it's called um it's um it's like love with stipulations yes like as long as she yes. do this for me i'll fuck with I, her right but it felt a little more like it felt a little more of a connection then you know just saying if she would have done if she does this for me and if she stopped doing this for me i'm not gonna feel the same way no nah, it didn't feel like that it felt like and you know the feeling like you know when somebody stops caring you know when love is lost like how you said like sometimes you get that feeling like mm, it ain't ain't nothing clicking right now you feel me so you're kind of like in this spot where Y'all don't want to let it go because y'all been there for so long. Y'all dealt with each other for so long. And it's, it's one person in that relationship that wants to fix it, obviously. But there's one person in that relationship that just isn't there. So, I've had that. So, it was like, I felt the, I felt the caring, like, emotion coming from him. And like I said, it could have been just because of what I was doing. But I felt like because of the stuff that I was doing for him made him care like way more. But I did feel like the like the love, the connection kind of thing there just a little bit. <laughs> but <laughs> but at the end of the day, I kind of like got that intuition because of how he was moving about things. So, like I said, I'm big on watching what you do. Like, I'm big on knowing your schedule. I'm big on this. I'm big on that. So, when you start doing things out your norm, I'm like, all right. And I, like I said, I don't want to be that girl to be like, oh, give me your phone. Let me check your phone type thing. Because that's just, that, that's how you get your feelings hurt. But, in the same sense, I'm just like, I need to know that what I'm feeling is right. Have you ever had that feeling? Just a devil. Yeah, well, I'm about to say, I wasn't trying to unmute. Um, yeah, if I'm not securing that shit, then it's not going to be a problem. Right. I feel like when you do it once, it's just like that that ring in the back of your head is always going to be there. Like, as, as much as you say, all right, I'm going to give it another chance, whatever, whatever. As much as you say that in the back of your head, you know you're really not doing that. You know, like like I said, you know you're not really doing that. Because at the end of the day, it's always going to be there. Which is why when y'all argue, like, yeah, because you know you did this. You know you did that. Like, we, we don't ever let it go. 
And I'm not ever going to let it go because of the simple fact that it's been said and it's done. And I'm not going to let you forget that because you did me wrong. It ain't vice versa. But if it is vice versa, you can go ahead and throw that in my face all you want to because I know I was wrong. I know I shouldn't have did it. I feel as though it's no point if, if, if you do get to a point in life where like things like that do happen and y'all decide to come together and get over it together, it's not fair for one or the other to throw it in each other's faces because at the end of the day, you still decided to stay. Yeah, I feel that way, but I at the same time, I don't. Only because of the simple fact that and even if I decide to stay, I'm not going to let you forget what you did to me. And I'm not because of the simple fact that I can't forget what you did to me. Like, be for real. You trying to tell me that if your man cheated on you right now and you decided to stay with him after the fact, right? And probably like a week or two later, y'all, you know, y'all doing good and everything like that. And just because of the simple fact that y'all doing so good that it does, like the thought of it doesn't hit your mind. You trying to say it wouldn't hit your mind whatsoever. Like you just able, when you say you want to keep them, you say you want to move on with the relationship or whatever, you can automatically forget it. That's what you're trying to tell me? Mm. No, fine. you can't. <laughs> because it, it it's, it has to be, oh, it has to be a balance. When you're in a relationship, I feel like when you get so much good being given when that one bad thing happens all the good is completely wiped out your mind because at the end of the day you're like why with all this good would you do this to me type thing and correct me if i'm wrong but once you do that wrong and we still create and all these good memories it's always going to be a thought in the back of your head like, bro, we're doing so good. You could be so happy. And then just something just switches. Like, but dang. Like, I remember, like, like it could be the scent of the day that you caught him cheating or whatever. The scent that he was wearing. And you could smell that scent, like, a year later and it brings you back to that memory. Like, it's, it's not like you can ever forget that because it was done to you. You know you were butthurt about it. Like... Like, out on the floor, hurt about it. Like, you ever get that feeling where your heart drops to your stomach? Like, the pit of your stomach? That feeling. When you have a feeling like that, it's hard to forget it. So, you can't expect me to be okay, especially when, you know, this is every female's thing. I thought you were different. I thought you were going to be different. I wouldn't have thought that you were going to be the same. Why would you do this to me? Like, it's... It's a lot. Uh, I'm not. I'm not even gonna lie. And I'm gonna. You know. I'm probably gonna get a lot of backlash about this. But females kind of put a lot of pressure on men. Females definitely put a lot of pressure on men. Like they expect just because of. And I'm not gonna say every. I'm not gonna say I'm not one of those females because I've I've done it with my boyfriend. Same way. But I feel like we definitely put a lot of pressure on men and talk about some. Oh, I thought you were going to be the one and you were perfect. Like, first of all, nobody's perfect. You ain't never going to find that. And if you do find that, tell me where you went. <laughs> and he might be perfect, but he, he might not just be perfect at that right time. Right. I mean, Sometimes you got to, you may have met him at the wrong time. Mm-hmm. Like, that's that's sometime. And Kendall, you can probably contest to this because of your relationship. Like, you and your man kind of like fell off and then got back together, right? Mm-hmm. So, did you feel like like you were able to get back together with him even after everything that y'all went through or whatever, and you don't have to get like in detail about it or anything, but did you get back together with him because you felt like you could rekindle what y'all had or like you never lost that love? Like, how was it for you? Simply, I never stopped loving that man, and he never stopped loving me. <laughs> right. Like, yeah, we had our little, yeah, we had our little split, yeah, we had our little whatever, but that was always my man. That was forever going to be my man. Right. Never stopped being my man. So I feel as though it wasn't even really a break. Like, it, it was kind of like a mental pause. Right. So do you feel like when you first dated him that you just met him and started dating him at the wrong time? Like you felt like, you know, 
Like, uh, let's put it like this. I don't think that I met him at the wrong time. I honestly think I probably met him at the perfect time because I met him at that stage where all that old stuff that he used to do back then or like and all the crazy stuff. Like every time people come to me and be like, oh, well, I'm shocked he's this way because back then, but, 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 I don't know nothing about that. Yeah. I don't know nothing about that. I can't relate. Yeah, see, as far as like me being in a relationship with somebody, I definitely feel like if I would have met some of the people that I was in a relationship at the past, like either present or like in the future, I feel like a lot about them was cha- would change. It's because we're dating so young. That's all it is. Like we're young, dating young. Because, you know, sis only 24. Yeah. Yeah. Since I'm 21. Right. So we're dating young and we're finding out that, you know, some of these men's boys, people got yeah. some got some got some growing to do. And, you know, meeting oh, them. At, yeah, of course. Even if I'm not gonna say cause it be females out here that listen. We ain't gonna get into that though. But I'm I'm definitely gonna have an episode where I tell the females about themselves too because you know this friendship thing was one of them. But I'm gonna tell y'all about yourself in relationships too. About myself too, you know, I'm gonna throw myself in there too because I'll be doing some of the things that I'm gonna talk about. But as far as being in a relationship, like I said, like we're kinda like young dating young. So we have to understand that not everything that we want in a guy or a female is gonna be there as soon as you date them like stop having that expectation that when you get into this friendship or you get into this relationship that they're just gonna be everything that you ever drunk no it's not gonna happen don't ever think that's gonna happen you kind of and it's like everybody's like oh i'm not raising somebody else's son Mm, when you get into a relationship, you kind of are. Oh, it does. I'm gonna be quick on the on the on the link. My uh, boss called me. All right. When you're dating, I feel like I 100 definitely feel like you're kind of like trying to mold the person in if they're willing to. Let's put it like that. I don't say that anybody should ever change anybody if they don't want to change. If they don't want to change, obviously that that's just not the person for you. But like I said, when you get into a relationship, you kind of got to like set the or even in a friendship because today is about friendship. But when you in that friendship or relationship, you kind of got to set that boundary for them. You feel me? Like it can't be no, oh, I want it like this, but don't get it like that. And uh, oh, I want my friends to be like this or I want my friends to be like that. Like, no, you can't be that way. You have to tell your friends like, look. Bro, I've been in friendships where people done me dirty. They did this, they did that. I, even if you don't want to get into detail because you don't want them to kind of like, you know, follow the trend of what everybody's doing and kind of like take that advantage and use it against you type thing. Even if you don't want to get into detail, if you want to tell them, sometimes you have to have friends for certain things. You have to have friends for certain things. And that's why I say, you know, get friends that's, in whatever you went to because that's gonna be the way it should be but at the end of the day choose your friends wisely real wise because this world is getting crazy and crazy about a day okay so definitely choose your friends wisely and make sure that y'all protect yourself at all times like friendship relationship wise make sure that you stay on your piece and sure. hello and this goes for family. This goes for family too, because family does that too. You know, you gotta watch out for your family members sometimes too. But so I definitely enjoyed this topic because this is something that's not spoken on too much, and it needs to be spoken on because we need to get back into the motions of having real friends and not these falling outs that we've been seeing lately. But I want to thank. Doll faces for coming in today and popping out and getting a little sign, 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 sign. You know, giving her opinion and letting us in on the little juicy details that she got with her friends. But, um, Mm -hmm. give her a round of applause for coming in today. 
Make sure y'all follow her social media. Make sure y'all follow the podcast. Make sure y'all follow me on social media at the original Barbie. Make sure y'all follow me on TikTok. Make sure y'all follow me on everything. And definitely make sure that y'all tune in. Right. Hey. Hey, hey, tap, 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 tap. <laughs> so make sure y'all definitely go tune into the challenge that I have for my song. It's a $250 cash prize if you go ahead and make the best TikTok. I want to see them moves. I want to see you dip. I want to see them hits. I want to see it all. So definitely make sure y'all tag me when y'all do that. And make sure y'all tune into the song when the song drop. I will be telling y'all in my uh on my instagram when it will drop and just make sure y'all keep tuned into the podcast because this is definitely gonna get interesting but thank y'all for coming in and go ahead and take us out